when uh, Ann Jarvis was working to establish Mother's Day as a national event and when her daughter picked up the mantle from her, they were not thinking about um, greeting cards and flowers. Instead, the Methodist women who invented the idea in America wanted to honor mothers in a deeper way. Uh, they were thinking about the work of women and the significant uh, testimony that women could give about the need for peace. Anne Reeves Jarvis organized women's clubs in the 1860s to serve suffering mothers and children. Women came together with their sisters in their locations uh, to respond to the needs that they could see. For Anne, she was in a coal mining part of what is now West Virginia, and uh, she could see the needs of women and children, and she could see the effects of the economy of her day on the people that she cared for. She started mother's clubs, and she taught them about hydration for fevered babies, about sanitation and nutrition. Then the Civil War came along, and they put a field hospital right outside Grafton. Anne recruited nurses for military hospitals, and after the war, formed friendship clubs to promote reconciliation. Anne Jarvis uh, was convinced that mothers, women, but especially mothers, had to work for peace because they could see the ravages of war in their husbands and in their sons in a way that uh, was so focused and so clear that uh, their voices would be uh, powerful. And that's what's at the genesis of the current Mother's Day. Faith was always foremost. When she was older, Ann Jarvis and her daughter Anna became members of Philadelphia's St. George's Methodist Episcopal Church. The daughter Anna became a Sunday school teacher here at, at St. George's, but she's best known for the efforts she made to get Mother's Day recognized as a national observance. She and John Wanamaker, who was a famous retailer here, were the ones that got Woodrow Wilson to sign the petition. Ann Jarvis died in 1905, before an official holiday was in place. But her daughter Anna, who was never a mother herself, stayed true to the purpose of the celebration. She envisioned Mother's Day as a time to write a personal letter to your mother, a time to send her an inexpensive carnation, a flower in which the petals hold tight like a mother's love, and a time to visit or attend church together. She later became an outspoken critic when the special day turned too commercial. She was really aggravated at people that turned that observation into a commercial outlet. So she had a lot to say to Hallmark. She had a lot to say to the Salvation Army that started selling carnations. When she made carnations the symbol of Mother's Day, they sold for pennies. But their price soon went up to $1.50, $2 a piece because people found they could make money off of it. And her, her comments about Hallmark are just wonderful. She said, how lazy can you be to buy somebody else's sentiment to hand to your mother? Like one day out of the year, sit down and tell your mother what you really think of her. And she was just furious. And I, I just, I like, love that kind of spunk. She would have been a really interesting person to know. And I like telling the kids about her because it, the history of the church isn't a history of ministers. It's the people that make up the church, and I think they're such a wonderful example of that. And, and besides, you know, making kids think about their mothers is always a, a good thing to do. <laughs>